The Chincona, or Cinchona, is a genus with 26 accepted species belonging to the Rubiaceae family, to the Chinconodiae subfamily, and the Chinconae tribe. Researchers currently believe the ancestral Rubiaceae was present in South America in the late Cretaceous period when the Chinconidae split from the Ixoroidae and both subfamilies diversified even further going into the Paleocene period. The continental separation resulted in even further distinct evolutionary lineages. In Asia, the ancestral Rubiaceae evolved into three subfamilies, Luculiae, Coptosalpeltiae, and Rubudiae, in South America, the Chinconodiae and Ixoroidiae subfamilies surged. The geographical history of the Chinconodiae family places its origin in the Andean ranges from where it spread north to Central America and the Caribbean in the late Eocene. The first quinine alkaloids were extracted in 1820. This was imperative in being able to develop proper treatments for malaria because it finally became possible to know which cinchona species contained specific alkaloid compounds and their concentration. In the 1850s and 1860s, British and Dutch naturalists started to smuggle seeds of the cinchona from South America to plantations in Asia due to an increase in demand because Europeans had started to live in the tropics in larger numbers. Intense research led to new high yield strains being created and eventually four species of chinchona were cultivated for several years in Asia. The species that have the highest economic value are C. calisaya, C. legeriana, C. officinalis, and C. succirubra. Two issues that hindered the domestication of chinchona were that the bark was called Jesuit powder. It was believed to be a plot against Protestants and King of England, and people started to mix other barks with chinchona bark, making it less effective. The chinchona tree, unlike other trees, grew scattered beneath the shade of larger, thicker trees. It was not a dominant or tall tree, and there were doubts about whether this tree could be cultivated and planted elsewhere on plantations. There was not much effort to conserve the plant and replant what had been taken by the native populations who harvested the bark. Despite the doubts about setting up foreign chinchona plantations, the plant grew successfully in Java and India. There were a few known species of chinchona identified by the color of their bark and each containing various amounts of quinine. English botanist H.A. Weddell discovered chinchona calisaya, a variation with yellow bark that seemed to produce more quinine and brought seeds of this tree to England. The idea that chinchona might be grown in other European colonies has been suggested as early as the 18th century. This is said in the book, The Miraculous Fever Tree, which describes the potential for loss of European life as something that caused much hesitation in terms of travel to Africa to open up trade and grow the economy. The idea that illness could be treated or even prevented allowed people to expand commerce in Africa, allow missionaries and scientists more land on which to travel, and the opportunity to spread European values throughout the continent of Africa. The tree has been victim to the creation of plantations and deforestation in its home nation of Peru. The species that remains in Peru is the colorless bark variety and produces large amounts of quinine. However, chinchona has been found to be invasive in the countries where it was introduced to help with fighting malaria. It has affected populations of birds native to the Galapagos Islands, as well as affected populations of other plants, for example, the rainforest vegetation in Tahiti. Until 1865, chinchona was found only in South America when a British farmer named Charles Ledger paid $20 for a seed of a species that produced high levels of quinine. He then took them to the Nilgiris Mountains in southern India to cultivate chinchona for the British Empire. Besides Nilgiris, the British experimented with cultivating the plant in many other areas of their empire with similar conditions to South America with limited success. The Dutch, on the other hand, found great success in growing chinchona in the colony of Java, now known as Indonesia. Ultimately, Java and southern India became the two most productive sites for cultivation. The Dutch and British governments maintained their status as the largest producers of chinchona up until 1890, when private enterprises and governments spread the seeds. This led to a larger supply than demand, driving down prices and causing many farmers in the area to switch their crops to tea 
since it had a much steadier price. Then at the outbreak of World War II, the Japanese seized control of Java, along with the majority of the world's chincona supplies. This led researchers in the United Kingdom and United States to develop synthetic alternatives to treating malaria and decrease the demand to cultivate it in those parts of the world.